It's E-Commerce Minute, your weekly dose of e-commerce tech and retail news with your host, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's the E-Commerce Minute, episode 779. These are our top stories in e-commerce tech and retail for the week of January 11th, 2021. Visa nixes Plaid. Visa had planned on acquiring Plaid in a deal worth $5.3 billion with a B, which is roughly double the startup's latest private valuation. However, the marriage is over with Visa and Plaid calling off their acquisition agreement Tuesday afternoon, ending the consumer credit giant's takeover the data-focused fintech API startup. The news comes after the Department of Justice filed an antitrust lawsuit last November on grounds that it would limit competition in the payments industry. The DOJ cited Visa CEO Al Kelly's description of the deal as a, quote, insurance policy to neutralize a threat to our important U.S. debit business. The department argued at the time that there was potential for the deal to extend a Visa monopoly on debit transactions, added that it must be stopped. The acquisition was announced about a year ago on January 13th when Visa originally announced that it was going to acquire Plaid. The company's API software, often referred to as the plumbing behind fintech companies, lets startups connect to users' bank accounts. The company says it integrates with more than 11,000 banks. In the last year, Plaid has seen unprecedented uptick in the demand for the services powered by the company, with around 60% customer growth in 2020, bringing it to more than 4,000 clients. Given the fintech boom that 2020 saw as consumers flocked to free stock trading apps and neobanks, the growth is not surprising. After all, Plaid's product sits between customers and fintech companies, so if those parties were executing more transactions, the API startup likely saw more demand for its own offerings. In a release, Visa wrote that it could have eventually executed the deal, but the protracted and complex litigation would have taken lots of time to sort out. (laughs) What do you think is going to happen, Bart? If people don't know what Plaid is, it's the connect. Like if you go to an app, like a financial app or anything else that needs to connect to your bank account, they're the ones, they're the middlemen that connects that securely. So you really don't see it. You see it probably for a hot, a hot minute. I have a love hate relationship with Plaid because Plaid somehow can't figure out how to connect to our, our bank account. So I, for like three years now. (laughs) <laughs> I'm serious. So I have a I have a little love hate relationship with it. Other than that, I mean, Plaid is a good technology. From that, from a point of view of what's going to happen, I thought when Visa announced they're going to buy it, that was a weird move. Good for Visa, but also weird for the rest of it because, you know, what happens when Visa goes? Well, we don't want to co- you connecting to Amex or another bank or anything else. Right. So they may silo Plaid and then. It limits that you that that universal that universal yeah, what would you call right. that you know yeah so it would be a monopoly is basically the the basis of the lawsuit kind of right it's basis of that but there's there's I don't remember what the what the name of the other one was uh, that's been around forever I remember nobody really knew what the hell it was but it worked but yeah I mean continuing Visa is everywhere which is kind of crazy. You know, Mastercard or Amex probably would have to have have some say around it, right? But this is also like what happens to these fintech kind of companies, right? There's a whole bunch of them that are out there. We use some of them because it's like, oh, you actually have a good way to manage money and actual good, you know, uh, user experience instead of banks who have a terrible user experience. Uh, Yeah, I can vouch for that. (laughs) Right, or anything else. So, you know, what happens to these fintech companies? Can they be bought by banks? Can they be, you know, is this the start of something bigger where they really can't? And then what happens to that? Do people put more money into it? Do they get funded? Like any startup, obviously, they want to have an exit plan somehow. Because investors want their money back. So. Right. And can you talk about, well, let's talk about two things, the development side of it and the consumer side of it. What are the implications for either? So let's just say that you know Plaid doesn't get bought and then there are all these other solutions out there. How more complicated does it make things or what, what does that do in the development landscape? From a technology perspective, it doesn't. I mean, they Plaid actually is, except for my instant, Plaid is one of the better ones, sort of like, Remember when Stripe came out with their stuff? 
you right. know, it used to be so hard to do all the credit card stuff. You had to go through like 50 different things. Stripe kind of adjusted that. This is why everybody uses something like Stripe or or Plaid. It might be a little more expensive, but it's easy to implement. Right. So from the development, front, it does nothing. From funding, it may be something. It depends how much they're charging. And we won't really know numbers because you don't see in the in the real world unless you're a fintech company. I mean, I guess you could just look at them up, but it doesn't do nothing from consumer. I mean, you hope that they have enough money and they're making enough money and they'd be profitable at some point so that it could be used. But if they go away, somebody can step in again. It's, it's one of those companies that you really, really have to be in for punishment <laughs> because it's security. It's your bank account. Like there's a lot that goes into it. Sure. But if you have the, you know, you have the knowledge for it, you can do so overall, I don't think does it. I think this prevented something worse, in my opinion. Um, worse being what? Worse being that it, it won't have, you know, Visa wouldn't, like we said, Visa wouldn't be like, oh, we're only processing our stuff. You go find something else. Right. Siloing, um, siloing these siloing transactions it. and blocking people yeah. out. That That's why I brought up the development part of it in that. You know, e-commerce merchants need to you know process all different kinds of credit cards, and now suddenly you've got to build different things. Or am I am I looking at that in the wrong way? Yeah, I mean everybody's used to it, right? Because if you look at it, you have you have credit cards, then you have PayPal, you have other forms of financials. Every single if you're using a platform, somebody has a built to something, or there's a plug sure. for it. So that's not actually the the craziest part about it. What is the craziest part? It's the it's the competitiveness of it. You know, I think that's oh, okay. The, gotcha. For me, that's that's the that's a visa. Visa just having that is is definitely like not ha- merging with them. It's it's good for consumer. It might not be good for Plaid. Hmm. What and do you think? Like, visa doesn't really care. It means Visa. <laughs> Does Plaid go back back to its sandbox and you know uh, tries again another day, or what do you think? What do you um, think will happen? Yeah, they'll keep on going. I think they might try to get merged and do something else with with another company. You know, somebody like I don't know Stripe. Yeah, I was thinking good. Stripe. You know, somebody like that where it's a processing company and not particularly Visa. The reason Visa was buying like they're they're also a processing company, right? not only credit card or, or debit card stuff, but they, they do process transactions and they have plugins for everything. Right. But you know, you know how many times you see now buttons like, like pay with visa, but this is, this was, this was different. Hmm. All right. Very interesting. We'll keep an eye on this one. See what happens with plaid. I'm sure visa is not crying in their soup today. And uh, just another <laughs> day, another day in the FinTech world. Next story. Amazon shuts down pantry service. Amazon.com has shuttered one of its first big moves into selling food online. Prime Pantry, the grocery and household essentials delivery service. Launched in 2014, Prime Pantry featured a selection of non-perishable foods and snacks, as well as cleaning products. It was designed to get shoppers to stock up on the bulky, often expensive to ship products in orders that could fit into a single large box. Initially, the service was offered only to members of the Prime free shipping program, but Amazon later added a $5 a month subscription option in 2018. Unfortunately, the service never really took off with shoppers, and by shutting it down, Amazon makes it clear that it's focusing on its core grocery platforms, including its main site, Whole Food Stores, Go Grocery brand, and fast-growing Fresh Concept. The company will transfer its pantry assortment to the main Amazon.com store so customers can get everyday household products faster without an extra subscription or purchase requirement. Those who were still paying the monthly fee were notified of the shutdown back in December and have received full refunds. Originally, the coronavirus pandemic boosted demand for pantry. The service was so popular it had to temporarily shut down last March due to high order volume. But Amazon is now going toe-to-toe with grocers through its new fresh and go grocery stores and through same day delivery pickup options, making a shipping service like pantry less relevant. Yeah, pour another one out. Wah, wah, wah. We use that sound effect twice in one podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Eh, that'll, that'll be fine. Yeah, it's I fine. think that if you look at it, you know, Whole Foods and, and their or Amazon groceries is going to fill that up like crazy because. Mm-hmm. So the Whole Foods in Philly, I live across the street from it. They got rid of, remember the, there used to be a coffee bar right yeah, there. Yeah, it was a whole coffee bar down there. It's gone. gone. It is all, <laughs> well, no, the coffee is 
bar is done. No, There's I walked no, in there and it was I was shocked. It was all it was all uh, refrigerated cases. Yeah, the, and they put new the yeah, and they put new elevators in just for those people. So there's a lot of that. Plus, Amazon is a grocery store, so this is nothing for them. Like, it made sense for a hot minute. They don't care about that. And they don't care because, you know, they send empty envelopes, you know. <laughs> uh, Bart, <laughs> Bart texted me last night and said, I oh, got a new Amazon, <laughs> new shipment from Amazon. You open it. it up. There's nothing in it. Hey, John, so I asked say? him, how did the air in Seattle smell? <laughs> no, no, no. You said free air samples. Oh, free air samples. I said, how does, sm- how does Seattle smell? He said, fishy. salty. <laughs> salty, fishy. <laughs> eh, that happens. But yeah, literally, going back. I, I could you not. Literally, I opened the envelope and went, well, that's a new one. <laughs> free free envelopes. I save those envelopes. I use them. But yeah, um, getting back to the grocery thing, because we're going to talk about returns in the next story. This is this is the, this is still kind of the Wild West with the grocery in terms of logistics and things like that. And let's let's not discount things like web van and things like that, which was a whole other era. But this this is a, this is a relatively new service area for these e-commerce companies. And you have to experiment. You have to, you know, you have to keep evolving and, and moving things. And I, I just, I don't know. And I guess this is a personal thing. Shipping paper towels just seems bonkers to me. But, I, I, you know, I guess if you're in a spot where you're not near a grocery store or a place where you can get paper towels, but I, I know people do subscription paper towels and it just seems kind of, well, yeah. I, I mean, know. I do. I mean, I, I, I don't do it. I know people who do. And it may, kind of makes sense. Unless, it, listen, if you... You don't want to, especially last year, if, first of all, there's not paper towels to be found. Besides that, <laughs> if you really are, don't want to go to a grocery store and, and really be protected and, and do all that, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. Uh, all right. So let's, let's, I, I forgot to put my, my COVID hat on like in COVID era. <laughs> sure. We were all, we were all doing that. I, I guess, I guess you're right. But your COVID, COVID hat wasn't on like, but only it's going to stay, COVID. John. Like, why would you like, if people do it. You definitely gonna use it. Yeah, this is true. The move comes amid aggressive moves to speed grocery delivery amid the pandemic. In early December, the Walmart Plus subscription plan eliminated the requirement for the thirty-five dollar minimum purchase to qualify for free next day two-day shipping. So they're they're evolving. Everyone's tweaking. They're trying to figure out what that sweet spot is. But again, having some of this stuff delivered is just kind of bonkers to me. But I guess that's what e-commerce is all about. Getting whatever you want delivered to your door. And speaking of delivery, there's also the problem with returns. Our next story, UPS expects many, many returns. UPS projects it will facilitate 8.75 million returns in the coming days as of this recording, setting an all-time weekly record. It expects to process 1.75 million returns per day. The pandemic holiday shopping caused online sales to surge in 2020, and Navar, a platform for e-commerce return solutions, projects total returns will rise 70% year over year. 70.5 billion with a B worth of goods purchased during the holiday season are expected to be returned. That's a 73% jump from the previous five-year average, according to CBRE Group, a commercial real estate services and investment firms. That's a lot of goods. Return rates typically hover between 25 and 30%, but more online shopping and bracketing, which is buying multiple sizes of the same item during the pandemic, have pushed that substantially higher. Even back on December 17th, FedEx revealed that it had already processed a record level of returns during the second half of 2020. Delivery firms are now working with retailers to help them reduce costs by providing scannable codes otherwise known as the hated QR code, which I now love, (laughs) that consumers can bring to retailers such as Walgreens or UPS stores that can accept returns. Walmart is allowing shoppers who purchase items online to schedule a time for FedEx to pick them up. We did a story back last week on that, so you can look that up and give it a listen. As we continue to adjust to the new normal, we're seeing unprecedented return policies to boot. So if your partner missed the mark by getting you a Tupperware set for Christmas again, there's a chance your local big box store doesn't want it back either. In fact, the Wall Street Journal reports that Amazon, Walmart, Target, and other retailers are refunding some purchases, but letting customers keep the product because processing returns are just too expensive. Target is also allowing customers to donate unwanted items. Locust Robotics CEO Rick Falk told the Wall Street Journal that online returns can cost retailers $10 to $20 per item. So for retailers, it's significantly cheaper for customers to return items in a physical store. 
But of course, cyber criminals are getting wise to these new return techniques. The most common method is to claim an item didn't arrive or was defective. They use social engineering techniques to try to persuade the retailer to issue a refund. Another common technique among scammers is to claim to be afraid to sign for packages during the pandemic for fear of catching COVID-19. About a quarter of all dark web chatter about return fraud in the past year focused on Amazon. The criminals say Amazon's algorithms are more likely to detect fraud if the account is newly opened, which has led to a secondary market for older accounts. People going to crime, crime's going to crime, but yeah. It's going to crime. <laughs> People going to crime, crime's going to crime. Criminal's going to criminal. Pretty pretty staggering stat there about returns are 70% over year, year over year. Captain, obvious here, that's COVID because everyone's shopping from home. I'm just wondering if this trend is going to continue. I did share a stat with you guys this morning in our Slack channel, uh, something about... Thanks to Bapa's curbside delivery and local delivery, retail stores are actually building more customer value. The online percentage of sales supported by physical stores are actually up. Uh, That's a stat that came through from the NRF this morning. We have to follow up on that. But interesting interesting trends happening here, especially around returns. So this is a whole new world here where it's e-commerce companies are realizing that, yes, we we can make the money to ship the item to you, but if you try to ship it back, we're going to lose money and you can keep it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to take advantage of that. I mean, you would hope, and us being in the e-commerce business, we would hope that people would just, you know, remain honest and trustworthy. But I always use my story of returning the bag of, of uh, gummy melatonin to Amazon. They actually <laughs> wanted it back. So I don't know. It's, I mean, they're, they're going to take a risk profile, right? Like they know they lose a certain amount of things and they, they take a hit for it but it evens out for them. You know, it's a big calculation. Sure. When you're so, dealing at, when you're dealing at scale, of course. Yeah. But it's, it's also like, what are you returning? You know, is right. it worth it? Listen, if you're ret- trying to return a $5 item, they'll be like, it's going to cost us more to, to triple the cost for you to just let us just right. send you a new one. You know, like there's a whole bunch of ways they can look at it. I mean, if it's a $200 item, they're going to be like, yeah, we want it back and you better be here tomorrow. You know? Yeah, I mean, and the, the questions I always ask is like, how much can Amazon absorb in the in these losses? And obviously, when you're dealing at this massive scale, NBD, no big deal. <laughs> no big well, deal. it's also, I, I believe, uh, we would have to really do some research on it. But it's also depending who's sending it. You remember, Amazon is not the only provider of items. Right. If it's an Amazon item they're providing, then yeah, that's a different story. But if it's a fulfilled by Amazon, that's a different thing. Yeah, you're a small, thing. right? If you're a small shop, but using Amazon to fulfill it, then they probably want it returned. So yeah. you, there's there's definitely there's little hints to that. And it depends on what the cost, you know, what, what your, your cost levels are. My funny story was always when the girlfriend tried to order a, a Virginia Tech keychain last year off of Amazon. This stuff was obviously coming, you know, drop ship via Alibaba because it took three weeks for us to get it. The first time we got it, we got fingers, fishing gloves, fingerless camouflage fishing gloves. We put in a, a complaint. They said, yeah, keep the gloves. We'll send you a new keychain. They sent us a second pair of camouflage fishing gloves, <laughs> told us to keep them. And then we just said, uh, and then they, then they just gave up and gave us our money back. So, wow. so now we ha- so anybody's looking for two pairs of camouflage fingerless fishing gloves. Uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. (laughs) (laughs) What's funny about this is like all of these companies are trying to make it as easy as possible to, you know, make your returns bearing everything that's going on. And yet I still, I still don't want to return anything. And I still can't get myself to go to Staples to return like anything. Like Staples, they're like, they're even like, no, just drop it off anywhere. We'll just scan it and pack no, literally. it and shit, send it out. And you're like, nah. Literally, I can't. <laughs> I cannot bring myself to do it still. You I don't really have to even pack it. You're like, here, <laughs> just yeah. show us. Don't even just throw the label. Just show me that. Oh, and actually, yeah, when the door is up, I just throw it in the door. And let them <laughs> just launch it, it. Yeah, just launch it into the door. Right. You wouldn't even do that. No. <laughs> Come Absolutely on, Brit. Absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, Brit. You're like, no, I'm just going to keep it. I'll just mm. take the L. Take the L. That, maybe, yeah, maybe that's why they send me just air. Probably. <laughs> Probably. 
Bart, you'll have to follow up with us next week. Let us know uh, how your return process. Oh, they're, they're right. <laughs> air, is, it, is it through air mail? Uh, air mail. You guys, huh? did you receive my package? Okay. Did everything come right <laughs> in in the package? No, they're, sending, they're actually just replacing and sending it, it back, which is fine. Well, I just bought a car. Did I? Can I? Can I tell them that I never got it? Not even. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Can you tell the guy who handed you the keys? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I never got it. Never oh got my it. God, what you talking about? All uh, right, you guys got anything to add? No. Nope. That's all for this episode. We'll be back next Friday to break down the week's e-commerce, tech, and retail news. And don't forget our long-form podcast, In the Ring, available on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, we'll see you on the internet next Friday. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. The dogs outside say goodbye too. They're really barking up a storm today. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy.